Hello, John Talley back in our studio for our three o'clock on Friday live session. Made it back from Virginia in one piece and promptly decided to take a part in a Z125 behind me. Look at it carefully. Uh, notice what's sitting inside of the frame. Can you see that? It's a bottle pump jack. What was I doing with that? This is going to be a pretty interesting video when it gets edited. That machine had a bent frame. Had a close encounter with a, uh, I think it was a driveway culvert. And one, uh, I believe it belongs to one of the friends that works out here in the, uh, the distribution center. So I decided I would give him a hand because it's more or less totaled. And, uh, it actually pushed in the, the front wheel without bending the forks, but bent the, uh, the top spine of the frame where it should be about that far away from that front um, spoiler, if you will, or fairing. It was actually about that far away. So uh, did some internal bracing and uh, managed to get a bottle jack to go all the way from the, the base of the frame up to the neck and stretched it back out. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty interesting. First time I'd ever tried anything like that. So yeah, why not? And is it really Halloween already? I mean, this year is just flown by. I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm mean, pretty sure it's accelerating. So I think I'm, we've talked about that though, haven't we? All right. Well, let's swing around and see what questions I missed last week. Charlie had asked me about a, is that the right one? That doesn't look like the right questions. Let's go back. Make sure I download the correct ones. I had not. That was the week before. Sorry about that. Now let's open up. All right. Um, MC had asked me. No, I don't want to sign up into Office. So. Great. Technology. MC had asked me, hey, John, I have an 06 YFZ450, my clutch cable touched my starter wire and made a big arc my, my starter. Now I have no spark, it's spark plug, and now it just turns over and check the stator and uh, a new spark plug. I went and looked at the schematic on this, and I can't for the life of me figure out, other than putting on a spark show, what in the world I could have done. But obviously, it upset something in there, and well, what's the, it's a very simple system, so what do you have? You've got your CDI, which is basically your ECU, then your coil, and then uh, goes the spark plug. Pretty simple. Let's hope that it, it may have just overheated a wire. I don't know how long it stayed connected <laughs> via your clutch cable, but um, it's potentially could it have tried to ground it or send the send the ground all the way up through the handlebar and maybe gotten to your cutoff switch. I mean, let's start with the simplest thing first. Let's make sure that that, that cutoff switch didn't act, try to act like an engine ground with that much current going through your, your, your clutch cable. Um, just a thought. I mean, it's, uh, that battery voltage was trying to get to ground and it didn't care which way it was going. It was looking for the path of least resistance. So check your, your kill switch on it. I mean, it, hopefully it's just something as simple as that. Other than that, you may have to process elimination, maybe get another ECU, take a peek, and see if it she'll, that'll take care of it. But I'd do everything else first before I ordered an ECU. I had a mechanic I worked with, and he was just damned to determine every time, every time uh, some type of electrical gremlin would come up, oh, it's got to be the ECU. He was never right once. It was always something else. So. Yeah. Have that be the last thing you try to uh, replace, not the first. Toons Wu had asked me, um, I have a 2003 Raptor and it won't start. When I hit the button, it just whines. Is it the starter or the battery? Uh, is it the chicken or the egg? Um, we've done several videos of um, help my ATV won't start. And I go through the, uh, the, the basic process of troubleshooting, you know, why your machine isn't turning over. But um, just the, one of the first things you want to look at is, is your battery, you know, does it have enough voltage over 12.5? And second of all, is it healthy? 
because sometimes I've seen batteries that would, uh, you'd be able to charge them up, but they won't have the, the delivery system to back it up, you know, to get things to turn over. <clears throat> and then you also want to make sure it's not your starter solenoid before you start replacing a starter because I know they're not cheap. But check out one of our videos. I'm sure the guys or the girl can uh, drop one in the uh, in the chat and direct you straight to it. Uh, William had asked me a 2000 Rancher 350. Love that machine. Starts cold but dies when warmed and won't restart. Just found a button that looks like a choke on the side of the filter that appears to be a primer. Could be. Pushed it three times, started, then turned off. Is there a small filter inside the 90 inside of the fuel inlet? I believe that there is at the bottom of the tank. Um, when it, uh, when you've got that nipple on the bottom of the tank, I believe there's a small filter there. But what you're describing, I've, I've run up on that before. Um, all things on a, uh, what was it? Uh, a Raptor 80. It was uh, actually caused by a stopped up breather valve in the fuel tank cap and the line that comes out of the top of the fuel cap. Uh, some industrious little dirt topper decided to fill it up with dirt and uh, created a vacuum inside the, uh, the engine or inside of the fuel tank. Yeah, it'd run for a while, but then it would eventually die out and <laughs> you can't get the thing to restart for some time once it finally uh, equalized. So the quick solution on that is just loosen up your uh, fuel tank cap just temporarily and see if I'm right. Well, let me know if you do come back and uh, check this video and uh, if that turns out to be the case. All right, let's jump back over to, uh, we've got some questions piling up, so we'll just go ahead and jump in there. Honest Chip, if an FCR carburetor is 20 years old, can it be rebuilt to operate as good as it did when it was new? For the most part, yes. Um, well, that machine's not behind me anymore. Our 2005 uh, uh, CRF car, um, 450, you know, it's on up there in years, coming up on 20, not there quite. But uh, if if there is a kit available for whichever carburetor you're working on, yes, you can. Um, it'll be close. The There are some pieces that you might not be able to get in the kit that uh, may wear it to the point where it's not really going to function as new, particularly the, uh, the slide itself. But uh, if you get enough new parts in there, it should be fine. Um, I have tried to clean really, really dirty carburetors and just it, it didn't end well. Um, even with an ultrasonic, some of the passages in there are so small once they get solidified with really, really varnished fuel, it's nearly impossible to get them all cleaned out. But given you've got a comprehensive kit, do a decent job of cleaning it out. It's not extremely corroded on the inside. You should be able to bring it back. DVT, happy Friday, peeps. Happy Friday. Um, two wheel and Pablo. Gobble, gobble, not yet. We got to get through um, Halloween first, almost. Panagiotis, I haven't forgotten about you. Um, I'm going to load up a few things and uh, send them to you because um, on our CRF, I know I went way too far because, well, y'all will find out later, but it, it more or less had to be perfect. So a lot of things that were still operational or usable got replaced anyway. Um, and a couple of those things being uh, the ECU, I was actually chasing a, a red herring and ended up replacing it. Of course, we can't send those back. So I'm going to be sending that as well as a stator to you. I'm not sure I want to admit what the problem actually was, but maybe I'll tell y'all some other day. But I haven't forgotten about you, uh, Penogiltis, and just a few other things we've got laying around. So if you would send me a message or send the group a message about the uh, stuff you're going to be looking for, because I've got boxes of it. Basically, everything, uh, every one of those boxes has CRF450R parts that um, we don't need anymore. I guess I could sell them on eBay, but it's more fun shipping them to Sweden, in my opinion. I mean, why not? <laughs> All right. Will Nate 35, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you as well, sir. Uh, David T is asking me, ever done a valve clearance check on a Suzuki with finger followers? How difficult is it? No, I, I can't say that I have. Um, hmm. 
but if it's just if it is a whatever finger followers are, are doing there i assume you mean um rocker arms but i mean the manufacturer is not going to make it so difficult to where an average person can't do that do that because you know, valve clearance you know that's important for the machine especially as it uh, ages so it shouldn't be that that tough We'll make 35 installing an Olin shock in my Grom and what's the best way to replace the spring? Hmm. So you're going to, we actually did a Grom a couple of years ago when we did the suspension on it, we did the front and the rear, but the Olin shock that I used, it came with a spring all the way all, already on it. As far as, you know, removing them, you just loosen up the, uh, the, the tightening bolt or yeah, bolts, if you want to call them that. And then it basically should have a section that lifts out, with, which will allow the uh, the spring to drop out. So it should, shouldn't be that tough. But the one we did, it already had the uh, the spring on it. So I'm curious which one you, you went with. Now you want to check out that video with uh, and look at the, the shock that we used. It was pretty impressive setup. I can warn you, if you're going to do the front forks, <laughs> you definitely want to watch our video. That's... Uh, it's kind of involved uh, to get in there and uh, rework the valving and, the, and change out the springs and those they're getting those uh, end caps out requires a good amount of heat uh, to break that uh that um sealant that they have in there brad 49 is asking me i have an o3 sportsman do they have a book on part numbers that may be in the same part but different near but different number i believe on our website um, when you go and drill down to your year making model and go to that particular part number there's also a section that says also used on or where used or or, or on, on models i can't remember the verbiage but it'll actually give you the range or give you the different exact model numbers of the different units that that part is used on. Is that what you're asking me? But uh, yeah, just go to our website and look it up and uh, you can get that kind of information. John Dickinson, <clears throat> does anyone work on Polaris speedometer? Hmm. I'm on my third used one, 2013, 550 Sportsman. The one gives me low voltage and I have 14.2 volts everywhere I check. What did the previous two, uh, what was their issue? But as far as anybody I know works on the, uh, the insides of those, nobody that I know of, because they're kind of a hybrid of analog and digital kind of crammed together. That's interesting system. I'm surprised you've had issues with three of them. That's, that's unusual. Simple Mechanics, hi. Hello to you. 500 FPS. I wonder what he does for fun. Paintball, maybe? <laughs> hey, what's the ticking noise in a Honda Fortrex ES 2001? More than likely, just your valves need to be adjusted. Uh, nine times out of ten, that's what it's going to be. Especially one that's, well, a drinking age now. So I'd say go check, take a check at that. Um, I'm fairly certain we did a valve adjustment video on our TRX 350, the Rancher. And uh, that should be very similar to your four tracks, whichever particular model you may have. John came back. Uh, each one had different problems. That is just bizarre. Um, low voltage, though. And you're saying you, you read 14.2. That sounds a little high to me. What RPM is it turning when it's doing that? I mean, I wonder if your uh, regulator rectifier is frying your speedometer because it's sending, sending it too much voltage. That's kind of high. I mean, when you rev it up, does it go any further than that? I mean, it shouldn't be that far. Honest shit, you know, well, you're welcome. Baby Bash, big hug from Mexico. Always watch you live. Well, Glad to have you here. Here's a big virtual hug back at you. <laughs> oh, Robert, looks like you've retracted his message. I've been scared. Hmm. All right, Micah, afternoon. Good afternoon. 
I took off my uh, 2020 Raptor 700 front hub spindle. Does they use washer on bad and back back and front, or is it just washer to the back alone? It's been a long time since I've worked on a since I rock and roll <laughs> since I've worked on a Raptor 700 front. Um, the best advice I can give you is go to our website partsilla.com and drill down to your gear making model, and then go to that front front wheel assembly, and it's going to give you an exploded parts diagram that'll show you how it's supposed to. Uh, or what's supposed to be back in there. So I'd say go uh, go take a peek at that and uh, let us know. But off the top of my head, I don't know. I'd have to go look at the parts diagram as well. Robert, okay, there's Robert's question. Big John, have you ever done a ATV street engine swap? Or if so, was it hard? No, I've never uh, never attempted that before as far as, you know, crossbreeding a, a Hayabusa into a uh, Raptor 700 or something like that. No, I never have. But if you're going to dive into something like that, make sure that you're good friends with somebody that owns or uh, works at a machine shop because you're going to be making a lot of custom parts. Uh, better if you know somebody that's on a Formula SAE team, they could probably help you out. <laughs> Connor Snow, hey, how are you doing? I was wondering if you have ever heard of people using a colored piece of heat shrink and putting it on their axle to color it. If you uh, if you do, have, do you know where you could get a good piece? Now, I've never heard of that before, but make sure I guess you could do that. Um, most of your electrical supply houses are going to have you know, high, higher quality um, heat shrink of you know that size or large enough to you know go over the end of the axle and they get shrunk down on it. Sure, why not? Uh, is that something you're going to pick up at you know one of your big box stores? Probably not. But um, go to one of your um, contractor level um, electrical uh, dis uh, distributors, and I bet you they can probably get it whatever color you want. <clears throat> Rad49, thank you for answering. Love your bits. Thank you. Not a problem. It is why we are here. Uh, Panagiosis, I have no spark when I kickstart it. And, and if it starts after some time, it's dying. And after some start again, same thing again and again and again. Oh, I understand your pain, man. I understand your pain. Like I said, I'll go ahead and send those two pieces to you. But um, the biggest problem I had with getting the, the 450 started, ended up uh, having uh, the carburetor just was not clean out enough. There were so many different little passages that is passages in there, and I missed one. And once I got that straightened out and got the uh, the car back to its more or less factory settings, just as a starting point, because uh, we don't know where this machine's going to end up, that that allowed it to finally start up. Well, that was a big day around here. <clears throat> Uh, John came back. That's that higher RPM. Low RPM is 12.8 and no change in speedo. Okay. Yeah. That, well, I can believe that then. If, if you're revving it up and you get 14.2 volts, okay. That's on the outer window or the upper top, the upper end of it. But yeah, if you're, you're doing 12.8 at aisle, I, I'd say it's, it's, uh, it's trying to do um, what it's supposed to do. Oh, tell me I caught up with y'all already. Y'all going to go easy on me? So I can head home early, maybe. Well, actually, I got something to work on on the other side of that wall behind that gray door there. <laughs> but it is neither ATV nor side by side nor motorcycle car. <clears throat> uh oh. Two Wheel Pro came back. FYI, your link to the Grom suspension video errors. Unavailable video is private. All right, guys, <laughs> which, which uh, we must have dropped in the wrong one for um, T-Wheel and Pavo to go take a look at it. So why don't we try that one more time and not select the, the private one. But <laughs> oh, T-Wheeling also came back. Hi, John. My Grom high beam indicator stays on even when I, the switch is set to low. 
Hmm. Does the your your light actually go from high to low? Is it actually switching like it's supposed to? I would assume yes. So that makes me wonder because I don't think that's an ECU decision. I think that's an actual physical switch connection that goes to that that light on the on the display. On that one, I, I I'll have to I'll actually have to go back and look at a Grom schematic to give you a definite answer on that of what to do next. So. Give me a, give me till next week and then I'll find that out. Hank, if you would note that question on the Grom so I can go and look at the, uh, the schematic on it. I can remember a lot of things, but not everything. <laughs> when we worked on our Grom, did we, I, don't th I didn't do anything with the headlight uh, on that one. We did uh, upgrade the the turn signals and I'm pretty sure we went to LEDs on the back and that had, we had to have a, a different little module for that, but I don't think we did anything on the headlight. Um, so I'll have to go take a peek at that. All right, guys, what's well, only 321. I've caught up with you. Well, was there any other questions that I missed? Yeah, there was one. Toasted Butter had asked me, any recommendations for a stuck float bowl pin? Hmm. I just bought a 2001 400EX and the pin is stuck. I'm really scared of breaking one of those posts off. Yeah, that, that's because the, they are thin and you run a risk. If you've pushed on it and pried on it and she really don't want to let go, um, make sure all your fuel is out of it and also make sure that all of your maybe cleaning fluid, brake cleaning fluid or carburetor cleaning fluid is completely dried out. So what I'm going to suggest is actually heating it up and then seeing if you can support if, if those are the two pins, excuse me, arthritis, and you've got the, uh, the pin going through, you would want to get something like a, uh, I don't know, a socket to where it would sit on it like that and then hit it from the top. And hopefully you don't see that and then tap it from the top gently, but heat it up with a propane torch or butane torch and see if that will get it to break loose. But yeah. If you're running a risk, um, been there, done that. Mine worked out, but you know, <laughs> I got, I think I got lucky. <clears throat> All right. There was one more from uh, Colleen. My 2021, good grief. TRX 4x4 Honda 420 AT, we won't start. All pieces are good, lots of spark, just won't, won't start, need help. 21, she's in, still in um, warranty? I would think they would have to deal, the dealership would need to deal with that. But it sounds like, well, if you know, if you've got spark, well, what's the other two things we need? Air and fuel. So when you turn it on initially, it, can you hear the fuel pump you know, do its prime? Because it should run for you know a couple of seconds, well, second and a half, maybe two seconds. And I wonder if you've got a fuel pump issue. Seems like there was a recall on those. I thought that was back in like 2015. I could be wrong. At any rate, it sounds like it's going to be fuel, but don't touch it if it's still under warranty. Take it to the dealer. Make them straighten it out. All right. There's one more. Gabriel, proud owner of a 91 Yamaha TDM 850-3VD1 with 53.6K on the clock. Has a very snug valve on number one cylinder. I'm fearing it might be a sunken seat. Need advice on how to proceed. All right. I'm not super familiar with the TDM 850, Gabriel, so I, I will have to uh, do a little research on my end before I can give you an answer on that. But uh, my initial uh, answer may be a little too simple. I, mean, I assume that uh, these, uh, these are adjustable, so go ahead and adjust them, or are you telling me they're beyond the adjustment that we can do on them? That could have been caused by either a the, uh, the the seat sinking or more than likely 
the bow face uh, getting worn down and closing your gap too much. Okay. Two wheel and Pablo, what, which product, grease, spray, lithium, silicone, do you prefer on electrical connectors? There's actually a CRC product that is made for those connectors. Of course, I've got some back in that cabinet, but um, it, it's specifically designed to where it's not going to damage your the, the plastic, most importantly, or the conductor, the actual connectors in there. And it also, uh, more than likely, you're going to have an O-ring or some type of seal on that connector. Look for that product from CRC. Is uh, I've had really good luck with it, and I've yet to have it, it damage anything. But that's usually what I go with when it comes to electrical connections. John came back. Look to upgrade my low beam headlights. I've tried the plug and play head up headlight upgrades, ready to change the whole housing out with some good ones out there without taking out a mortgage. But well, that's the one thing that we never replaced was the uh, the headlight on the. Uh, on the unit and I'm sure there's a bunch of them out there. Um, I can take a peek or the guys can take a peek and maybe drop you a message as to what we, uh, what we would recommend. Micah came back, Hey, the link, Hey, the link help, but it's not showing the spindle, just the hub and the front wheel. And I'll put two washers in back and front. I'm wondering if it'd be safe or, or, or if it would lock up. Well, if you've changed the alignment of the spindle, that's also going to change the alignment of your rotor in relation to where your caliper is. So yeah, you need to be right about that. If it's not showing those two on that, I've seen Yamaha do this before. If it's not showing those, uh, what you're looking for on that particular um, parts diagram, it may be associated with a different diagram and a different picture. So if you have to go slide by slide <laughs> until you find uh, what you're looking for, because it's going to be there. It, it has to, if it goes on the machine, it's going to be on the parts diagrams. Sometimes not always where we think it should be as far as the organizational side of it goes. Well, there's still a couple more. We'll go ahead and uh, get to this next one. Hi, John, my 400 EX valve adjustment tap it nut came undone and got stuck. Oh crap, stuck in between my, my cam and the head. Everything's fine besides that. I drain my old little shaving from the nut. Is that a common thing? Only if it wasn't tightened down enough, well, whoever did the, the last um, adjustment on it, they, they must not have snugged it down enough. Oops. Oh, Panagiotis. John, when are you gonna see how the uh, CR450 is in the final stage? Soon, soon, and you're not going to recognize it. You notice it's not on my table anymore. That's because it's next door sitting on its uh, own little personal plinth at the moment. It, it looks so good. I, I can't wait to be able to tell y'all what we're going to do with it. It's, it's going to be cool. All right. All right, guys, I think we're going to call it a day. It is 328. I have some more prep work to do on the other side of that wall. So um, we're going to go ahead and uh, sign off. So everybody have a great weekend. Have fun celebra celebrating Halloween. Be safe. There are some true freaks out there. Try to avoid those at all costs. Everybody have a great week. And God willing, we will see you next Friday at 3. See you later.